Today, gold experienced its largest two-day drop in 30 years, crashing through its support at $1,400 an ounce. Silver also dropped sharply, losing 6% in a single day, and Bitcoin fell through the floor, shedding 70% last Thursday. All while the stock market is showing signs that it too is in a bubble, and is likely to face a serious correction in coming months. So what's really going on here? Many are saying that the gold crash was sparked by the indications that Cyprus may be forced to sell off its gold reserves and by fears that this policy may be implemented throughout Europe. Others say that the drop in gold and silver is all being orchestrated by the Federal Reserve and other banking interests to protect the dollar. Those of you who follow precious metals have probably heard this explained as being driven by the dumping of gold and silver ETFs, which are paper assets not backed by any physical commodities. However, if you take a step back and look at the trends that are developing across the entire market, what we see points to a deeper underlying cause. The first question you should ask when looking at the run-up to these crashes is what was driving the investment in the first place? Was the upward movement in the markets representative of an actual improvement in the economy? Or were these movements in sync with the situation on the ground? Well, no, not at all. In fact, the disconnect between the speculative and investment markets and the real world economy has been growing. And a number of experts have been talking about this trend for some time now. Not surprisingly, some of the heaviest hitters in the investment world, including Warren Buffett and George Soros, have been quietly exiting the US stock market, and many corporate insiders have been selling their stocks instead of buying over the past several months. Now obviously when it comes to precious metals, this dynamic is more complex. There's a difference in the investment mindset because it's viewed by many as a hedge against inflation and a sort of safe haven to protect wealth during a downturn. And you also have a number of countries like China buying it up in large quantities. However, this does not make it invulnerable to market forces. If people start selling in mass, the price drops. This is crowd psychology, just like a herd of buffalo that panic and run off a cliff. It doesn't have to be rational at all. When it comes to gold, we do have some real world limits because it currently takes $1,200 an ounce just to get it out of the ground. And mining companies aren't going to sell at a loss, so the price will stabilize somewhere above that mark in the long term. Now we really can't discuss the upsurge in any kind of investments without looking at the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing policies. For those who don't know, quantitative easing is basically a fancy word for inflating the money supply. We used to say that they were running the printing presses, but nowadays they don't even print the money. They just type it into existence. We've had QE, QE2, QE3, QE4, one after another flooding the market with dollars in a desperate attempt to prop up the economy. Now this hasn't led to an inflationary tailspin because of the petrodollar, and that has resulted in a break from the historical relationship between the money supply and gold prices. Those who don't take the petrodollar into account have a very difficult time explaining the way commodities have been behaving for the past five years. The fact that oil is only sold in dollars is spreading out the consequences of US monetary policy across the globe, making it much less noticeable to the American public, and distorting the way that they behave in the markets. If you were using the stock market as your point of reference, all of this quantitative easing seemed to be working. But again, the real world economy has not been rebounding. And what that means is that what we've been seeing are speculative bubbles fueled by the influx of cash. Whether we're talking about the stock market, precious metals, or bitcoins, these upward swings have been investment oriented. Obviously, people are more likely to invest when more money is available to spend. And as the money supply grows, so does investment of all kinds. The problem is that in the United States, most of the investment that we've been seeing hasn't led to real increases in jobs. And when investor enthusiasm surpasses productive returns and real world demand, a correction is inevitable. Once you're in a bubble, almost anything can spark a correction. People have been giving a lot of attention to the Cypress angle, but it's worth noting that these crashes just happened to occur during the build up to tax day in the United States. Could it be that people were selling bullion and bitcoins to cover their income taxes? The reality is it could be a combination of factors. These kinds of market movements are often not traceable to a single cause. Multiple variables can influence market sentiment and coalesce into a panic. Again, markets have to be looked at in terms of human psychology, because in the end it all comes down to perceived value. This entire system is a construct of belief. Those who become attached to a concept of the absolute value of an asset open themselves up to severe losses. So does this mean that people should sell all their investments and stick to cash? Well, some people will promote that idea, but the dollar and the euro are both headed for a collapse. And once that happens, all bets are off. In the short term, gold will not go below $1,200 an ounce for any significant period of time, and it will most likely rebound in the next few months. After the collapse, who knows what gold will be able to buy? That would really depend on what people decide to use for exchange. It could very well be that tobacco would be the currency of choice. It's really impossible to predict that kind of thing. So what's the solution for the average Joe who doesn't have the resources to buy at companies in emerging markets or to set up elaborate hedging strategies, or who doesn't even have the resources to buy any meaningful quantity of gold or silver? I'm not here to give you investment advice, but my personal opinion, we need to pull out of this speculative mindset and start thinking towards an alternative economy. When we're talking about a real economy, it's the means of production that count, not the unit that you use for currency. People need to be looking towards things that they can produce in their own homes, which will be useful during a crisis. We need to grow gardens, we need to be building up connections and relationships in our local area with people with the same mindset. Buying up assets which you hope will increase in value is not likely to do you nearly as much good in the long run as building alternative means of production and exchange. Obviously, this isn't an easy answer, and it may be next to impossible in some neighbors just due to the mindset of the public. But realistically, what other option do we have? 
In the speculative markets, the little guy never really has a chance. If we try to compete with the elites on their terms, we're going to get eaten alive. We have to stop playing their games. And any investment strategy tied to their current monetary system is still their game. If you'd like more content like this, please subscribe to this channel, Stormclouds Gathering, on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, please follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website, stormcloudsgathering.com. 